Hello, everyone. Does everybody know? Does anybody know what this is? Is this a little tiny scrap? That's, that's what my husband thought when I first showed him my first inchy, which was not this one. But so let's see that one a little bit bigger. Well, maybe this is a better picture. But anyway, how many of you have made inchies in any way? One. One? <laughs> but how did you stop? Oh. Please, I'm asking you, how did you stop? <laughs> I made, I've made, I don't know, somewhere between 1,000 and 2,000, and I, I, I can't stop making them. So if you've already made inches, I'm going to share with you a few of the things that I've done with them, because that was one of the big questions for me when I started making inches. Well, what do you do with them? That was the question before I started making them and after when I had a whole bunch. And if you haven't made inches, I would love to show you how inches can add that extra dimension and sparkle to your quilts and your other types of fabric art. So let me tell you a little bit about how I first discovered inches. I lived in Germany for 17 years, and so when he said I was from Las Vegas and now live in Georgia, there were 17 years of Germany in between Nevada and Georgia. And I used to go to a little shop in a little German town called Patchcom. And once in a while, I would go in there, and she would show me these awesome things that some of her customers brought to her to share with her other customers. And she showed me inches one day. And I looked at them, and I thought, oh, wow, these are awesome. Love them. But how do you make something interesting in one inch, a one-inch square? How do you make something interesting out of that? And, you know, something you have to know about me going in here is that my projects tend to grow and grow and grow. They start out a little small, and then I add this and add that and put another border on, and then and they get more complicated as I go along. So, of course, I was looking at that one-inch square going, right. Uh -uh. So I said, yeah, that's really cool, but I wasn't really all that greatly interested in making them. But as time went on, and I... I kept being involved in these mega complicated projects, you find after a while you kind of need a break. And so one day I was overloaded with a couple of design decisions I was going to have to make and couldn't figure out what to do. And I thought, I'm going to make some inches just because I need a break. And so I started with, hey, there. I started with that fabric. Because it was a fabric I had in my stash. And I wanted to see, I just wanted to use what I had. Okay? I didn't know how to make them at all. I'd never made postcards. I'd never made any of that kind of thing. But I started with this fabric about a six by nine piece. And I didn't really realize how many inches that would make. <laughs> but when you think about six by nine and, that, and do the math, it's like 54 inches if you don't make any cutting mistakes. So uh, it wasn't a little tiny few inches I was making. So I made the inchy sandwich, I threw some quilting on there, and I started cutting it into one inch squares, and every single one was different. Every single one. There were not two the same. Just out of that six by nine fabric, I got like 48 inches that were gorgeous, and they hadn't even been decorated. So I didn't even, actually, I didn't wait to cut them all out. I took the first 10, and I went to the sewing machine. I thought, okay, well, I don't know how to edge stitch this, but okay, let's just try it. So I edge stitched a couple, and it was even cooler after I got the edging on it. It was like a little tiny binding, little teeny tiny. And, you know, I used to like miniature houses, doll houses. So, I mean, I come by this little miniature obsession, honestly. My mother did that to me. And so anything small, and this little tiny binding was so cool. So. At that point, I take this little, one little inchy, and I run in, and I look at my husband, and I said, look, look what I did. And he's like, right, okay, cool, honey. He's watching sports. And I said, no, 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 look, it's an inchy. Like, he's gonna understand, just because I said it's an inchy, right? And he says, okay. I said, all right, never mind. So he'll understand when I get it decorated. So I go back to the sewing room, and I start digging and pawing and looking through all of my embellishments for just the perfect things to decorate all this. 
and I found threads and beads because I've been collecting all this junk for years. And that's what it is, it's junk. Some of it really is because it's old jewelry that I've broken and just saved because you can't get rid of anything, right? So I go and I start digging and pawing and I start decorating and it became really fun to figure out how I could make all these inchies that looked greatly different but still similar how I could accent that with the stuff I had in my sewing room and in my embellishment boxes. And it hit me that for all these years, I've been hanging on to this junk and buying collections of beads and fibers and even scrapbooking things because even though I don't do scrapbooking, I don't even take pictures, um, I go to the scrapbooking department and I pick up all those little bits. And they go home and I go, why did I buy this? But here, this is why. I finally knew why I had all these things. And I think I, think I am actually a little bit, um, what do you call that? I can see the future sometimes. Because see, I knew all those years, I need to buy this because someday I will need this. And so now I have a reason to need all of these things. So I made four sets of 12 it, because they, they seemed to separate themselves as I was working on them because 12 of them sort of had more blue and 12 of them sort of had more of that coral color and some of them had more of the striping so they, they naturally divided themselves into these four sets and as I made them I took photographs and I sent them to my mother because she's always the first person I show things to, even though she is not a quilter. She's not a quilter. Um, she doesn't even do fabric anything anymore. She keeps dumping all of her old fabric on me. And so I had these four sets and then I said, what am I going to do with them? These are great, but what do I do with them? I don't really want to just put them in a box because that's boring. And I have to pull them out of the box to look at it. I did buy some really cool boxes though, I mean back to boxes, they're to store slides in and they have these little plastic pouches in them and they fold up and put them in a box. Well they're great but it's still in a box. You can pull it out and look at it but they're still in a box. Okay, could I make a bracelet? I don't wear a lot of jewelry. I have a lot of jewelry but I wear like what you're seeing and so why would I make an inchy bracelet? It just didn't make any sense. So when I started to really Say, I went to Google and looked, okay, what are, what's everybody else doing with these inches? Because obviously there were people making them. I mean, people started making them with paper before they were making them in fabric. So there were people with inches, but what do you do with them? Nobody knew. There were a few display ideas, but nothing that really caught my eye. So I thought, sat and thought about it a while, and I thought, you know, I really like them just the way I photographed them in sets of 12 in the four different sets that they made themselves into. Uh, and I thought, all right, what if I just make a little background quilt? Something really simple, right? And it was like a light bulb went off in my head. Really, really simple. And that's a very dark picture, but here, there. I told him I would throw quilts at him when I wanted him to, you know, yeah, sure. So that is the first inchy quilt that I made. It's very, very simple. It's meant to be simple because it's a background for the inchies that can be sometimes very complex and very interesting all within their little sets. So the quilt doesn't need to be complicated and it was like one of the easiest quilts I've ever made. And you add a little bit of stitching to anchor the inches, give them a place to rest, and it was a complete success. I loved it. Still my favorite. I've made lots, and it's still my favorite. When I started thinking while I was making this quilt, and I could tell it was really going to go well, then I started thinking, ooh, this could be really good. Because think of all the quilting patterns that have squares. What if you take it and replace those squares with inches? Put it on top of the squares or, or don't even piece and just put the inches right there, okay? A single Irish chain, 
easy. But once you put inches on it, oh my gosh, trip around the world. I wouldn't recommend putting inches on every square. Because then it's like, eh, it's all inches and nothing else. But, or something really complex like this Burgoyne Surrounded. So once I thought of doing that, I couldn't stop thinking about all of these different quilts. Because, and here's another one. You probably didn't. We'll wait till he comes back. But let me show you these two quilts. Here's a quilt. This pattern sat on my hard drive for like five years. It's complicated to piece. It is, I'm telling you. The way I originally, oh, hi, Andy. How are you? Good. It's complicated to piece, the original way I designed it. But that was me. I'm complicated like that. But if you take that same quilt and put inches on it, the piecing is simple. It's nothing but simple. And the inches make that quilt just go, zing, look at me, I'm here. And then when your editor makes you add one pink inchy in the middle, it's even better. I just had to, I had to throw that in there, just because Andy was here. <laughs> and so those are those two quilts. This one, it's flat. It's cool, because it's got a little dimensional look to it, because of the values of the fabrics. But it's still kind of flat. But when you add the inches to it, they stand out from the quilts a little bit. They're textured. They've got shiny things on them. There's so much dimension in these things that the quilt can't help but be cool. <coughs> so let's go back to one inchy. This one's kind of fuzzy. It's got a mohawk hairdo. And it's, it's saying, look at me. But add some more. And then there, it's even better. It's like, how can you stop at just one? How did you do that? Because they're all similar. You can tell they're part of a group. But every single one is so different that you just want to study each one and look at them and look at each one's little story. <coughs> so when I realized how much fun this could be, I started pawing through my stash. Not the, not the embellishment stash that I'd already pawed through. I started going through my fabric stash looking for fabrics that would make good inchies. And what constitutes a good inchy fabric? Well, just about anything, as I have come to, to find out. But back then, I was looking for fabrics that had a lot of different pattern elements. OK? This fabric looked like the tops of petty fours. Now, petty fours, not my favorite thing to eat, but they do look cool. OK? All the little different petty fours in a box. So I made some inchies out of this. And I got a whole bunch of different things. I got things that looked very organic. And when you add the beads and a little bit of embroidery, even silk ribbon embroidery, you get all these inches that look like little petty fours that you could just eat. So I made a quilt that looks like petty fours. <coughs> it's a box of petty fours. How easy. And it's honestly, it's just strip piecing. So the quilts, again, can stay very simple, but have really, really big impact. They're also careful with these quilts, and I toss them all over the place. It's nice, though. Question. Question. How do you attach them? Yes. Attaching them is easy. Everything about them is easy. Some of these, like that one that Tim has is attached with Velcro so that the inches can be moved around. Iron on Velcro. You can rearrange, pardon? Genius. <laughs> well, OK. <laughs> you can rearrange the inches. Actually, there's an, the extra one that my editor made me take off and replace with the pink one is on the back for storage. Um, if you don't want to use the Velcro, if you don't anticipate ever rearranging your inches for a little bit of playtime, you can glue them on. I believe those on the Pettifort quilt are glued. You can also attach them in other ways, like beads. Beads and beading string, they hang from the quilt. They make also great fringe, which same technique. A fringe can be used to make a bracelet if you really, really want to. Do you want to take that one? Um, 
I liked the Velcro actually, partly because it gave you those color play options, but I also liked it because it made them stand out from the quilt. They weren't so flat. Now, there's a, there's a time and a place for flat and there's a time and a place for Velcro, okay? So, so here's one of the um, inches from that quilt that Tim has right now. And it's really cool how you can take these fabrics and tell a little design story. I mean, the cat face. I, I'm a cat person. My cats are my babies. I love cats and the cat face, I had to do it, okay? But it's got interest because it's an off-center design, but it's square. It's just like, wow, and to, to think it's only one inch. I mean, you could make a big quilt like this and it would look awesome, but to think that's only one inch, you know. But then when inches get together is when it gets even better. Yes, sir. How are you stitching your border? Is that just a zigzag? Or yes. It's a very tiny, yes. Yes, and I'm going to get to exactly how to do all that. Okay. You guys are like, wow, I want it now. <laughs> okay, patience, patience. So when inches get together, you get more than one, then it gets even better. Well, that's the same quilt he has, but it's sideways. So, so, so I can go through all of these wonderful little inchy quilts. One, one inchy, multiple inches. And you can carry the theme in your embellishments. You can get musical notes. I've actually taken wire and twisted it so it looks like a treble clef to put on a musical inchy quilt. There's all these different embellishments. I mean, you can use anything. Anything you can sew on, glue on, wrap around, poke through, you can use on an inchy, as long as it's small enough. I mean, obviously, you don't want to put a two inch something on a one inch inchy. But I just found this out, out on the sales floor. I don't even know what this is. But you know, if I cut it up and I mush it up, you can make little balls, you can make little bows, you can just put it on top and put beads on top of it. I mean, you can use anything, okay? Wool roving, bits, couch over it, sew through it, let fringes hang off the edges of your inches. You can do so much stuff. And of course, beads. Beads are my mainstay for embellishments because there are so many of them. You just cannot, cannot imagine. Now, when I was pawing through my stash, I came across a fabric that was bigger than I thought would work, the motif. Because, I mean, if you cut it up into inches, they're, they're not going to look necessarily like they all belong together. Okay, because some of them are going to have red on it and some of them aren't. Then I thought, well, wait a minute. What if you cut it up and then put it back together? So that's what this is. Bigger prints can work depending on what look you're looking for. So if you cut it up and put it back together in the same order, you're going to still see the picture. And in this case, I used the embellishments to accent the colors and the textures that were already present in the fabric so that it wasn't covering it all up, okay? Then my pawing through the stash journey took me to semi-solid fabrics like batiks. Well, why can't you use those? But when you cut them up, they all just look gray, right? Okay, these are all, these are all gray, but so at this point, then your quilting comes into play. Your quilting stitches become your designs, okay? Because you're gonna quilt those layers together when you make your inches, and you're gonna add those design elements that are not there because it's a semi-solid fabric. Okay. Semi-solid fabric, or inches on your quilts. Now I call these color wash inches because the color washes from one to another, okay? And you can do great things with color wash inches, like this one, or that one too. This, this quilt started from a jelly roll of some sort, a batik jelly roll, that just looked like it all needed to be flying geese. And that's Velcro, so you can play and move your inches around. Okay, I want to get to the meat of this. How do I do it? Here we are. Okay, four layers. Your inchy sandwich is four layers. 
it's your main fabric, your top fabric, a print or a semi-solid, something like that. There's a little bit of thin batting in there, like um, thermor, that kind of thin, very thin, a fleece. Then I put a stiffener in it because you don't want them to be wobbly, okay? Um, you can use something like Peltex. Peltex 72, and all of the things I recommend you use are fusible. So it's very easy to put it together. And then you need a backing, because if it's fusible down there, you need something on the back. So you fuse these four layers together, and you don't press really hard, because you don't want to press the puff out of your inchy. You want to leave that puff in there, so that then you can add quilting stitches, okay? And you're going to get the dimension just like a little tiny quilt. Okay, when you um, are add, when you're thinking about now, I've lost my train of thought. That was bad. Okay, quilting stitches. If you're using a print fabric, just any old stitches, any old quilting will work. Just all you want to do is hold those layers together, and you can follow the designs on the fabric. You can make up your own designs, swirls and zigzags as you go. You want to make sure your quilting stitches are pretty small, though, which is good for some of us. When <laughs> Mine tend to get smaller and smaller. And so that when you cut your inches apart, your stitches aren't going to pop at the edge. Okay, Because if your stitches are long, they're going to come loose at the edge of your inchy before you can get them sewn down. Okay, So once you have your inchy sandwich, then you go and you cut it apart. Now, you can play fast and loose and say, oh, I'm just going to cut it and see what happens. And that's what I did with my first ones. Or you can plan a little bit and say, well, I really want that flower right there in the middle of my inchy because I'm going to put beads right there. So you can plan ahead a little bit here. And use your ruler to make sure you're cutting the piece you want to cut. Um, and if you're using a semi-solid fabric like a batik, then you want to add some very small quilting designs to your inchy sandwich. Pretty small, like smaller than one inch, okay? But swirly, zigzags, easy stuff. Even just three lines across the center of an inchy, it's going to add texture, it's going to hold your inchy together, and it's going to add a base for you to put some more embellishments on or around, okay? So once you've cut them apart, then you go to the sewing machine, and you add your edge stitch. Yes, ma'am. When you are you saying that you put a piece of fabric down and it's had all the batting and things you should uh, divide it into squares and then just make the pieces longer and then you can just make a big flat of them? I start with nothing bigger than say six by nine. The question was how do you I let me make sure I got your question right. She wanted to know how we actually divide it into inches, right? To make the quilting designs, is that what you wanted to know? No, ma'am. Just free motion quilt everything. And, and remember, OK, you're probably thinking, wait a minute, free motion quilting, oh, bad word, bad word. Um, if you're not all that good at it, it doesn't matter. Do you know how many sins embellishments can cover up? <laughs> Lots. The wobbles, the zigzags, the oops, I wasn't supposed to go that way with your machine quilting. You will be covering it all up or cutting it off. I mean, yeah. So um, don't be scared of the machine quilting part. So you go, you machine quilt it all together, and then you cut it into one inch squares. And that's when it really gets fun, because that's when you see what it's really going to look like, the beginning of what it's going to look like. And you go to the machine, and the edge stitch is just a zigzag. That's all it is. You know when you satin stitch over applique or something like that? It's a very short, very narrow satin stitch, zigzag stitch and you go off the edge of the inchy so that it goes all the way around. The thread wraps around the edge of the inchy and keeps all of the 
puffy stuff inside and makes it so you don't have ragged edges all over the place. And honestly, that's not the only way to edge an inchy. That's just the way I do it. But I teach you how to do it in minute detail in my book. You change your tension? Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Loosen it. And you are the one that knows your machine best. But I tell you all that, like loosen it a little bit. If you see this, then maybe you should tighten it up. You know, and how to get your stitch length perfect, which is, you know, how many stitches you're going to get per inch so that you get good coverage but aren't gumming up and getting jams and big knots and lumps in your edges. And you had another question? It's two millimeters. Really, really narrow. But you can do it wider if you want. Nope, you start on one side and you go all the way around. Start at one side and you turn your corners and you go all the way around your inchy. Individual inches, yes. Yes. She asked if I'd ever tried it on a serger. I have not, and I have one, but you know, I'm not very good at using it. <laughs> I used to make clothes. Um, I would think, though, that on that serger thing, if you know, what do you do with the tails? How do you turn corners on a serger? I don't know. Maybe the newer ones do it better than my old junky serger I have. I don't know. So, okay. So once you have all your inches edged, I do it in, I do it in an assembly line thing. You quilt it, cut it, edge it, and then embellish it. And so once I have them all edged in a certain set, I go to my beading table and I pull out everything out of my drawers that I think might match. Everything. And I pile it all over the place. And you just add anything you want to it. And there's a lot of different ways you can add things. And even, like I said, go back to that scrapbooking thing again. Those are wonderful places to discover adhesives that quilters might not know about, glues that can help you. And then I know you're going to say, yes, but glue, that's my quilt. OK. I, I'm, I'm going to be honest here, I, did never meant, I never meant to wash these things, okay? <laughs> if you're planning to wash them, um, you just need to make that decision on what to use or what not to use in your embellishments and in your attachment materials. So I go for everything and I put anything on an inchy, even t bits of paper, if that's what I need. But that's a decision that you have to make yourself with how this quilt is going to be treated, okay? So then once you have your embellishments done, it's time to design a quilt. If you haven't already, time to design a quilt around those inches. And so that is what I spent a lot of time doing for this book. And I think, unless you have more questions, oh, you know what I didn't show you, was while I was doing all these inches, I actually discovered I needed some more tools. Can you believe it? I have been quilting for 20 years, okay? And I needed more tools because the tools I had didn't quite cover it. Because you can cut inches with any old ruler that's in your sewing room. Yes, you can. And I show you how to make it easier with pictures because what I found with any old ruler in my sewing room was that those rulers the, the ones that I've always had have kind of thick lines on the one inch, on the inch marks, and they were obscuring the edges of my inches and they weren't perfectly one inch. And I'm a perfectionist, I'm a nitpicker, and I wanted mine to be perfectly square and perfectly straight and perfectly one inch. So I created the inchy do ruler to make them perfect. And it has thin lines and open corner intersections, which is very hard to see while you're right up here. But there is a picture, ah, wait, there. See, that's the thickness. And that's what I ran into. And I thought, uh, I can do it, but I can make it easier. So thin lines, open corner intersections, and ways to center your designs. There are centering marks on this as well. Then I discovered that the fun thing to do while you're shopping is be able to see ahead while you're shopping to see what your inches will look like. And I created the Inchy C viewing tool 
so that you could take it in your purse to the, sh to the store and run it across your fabric to see, ooh, what's going to happen when I cut this up? White side for dark fabrics and a dark side for lighter fabrics. So that's the Inchy C, Inchy Do viewer tool and ruler set with complete instructions for cutting up and making your inchies inside.